Hi, I'm Allison, and um, I am one of the two owners of Curated Time. Um, Curated Time is a private chef personal um, chef business. We do um, private events, dinner parties, uh, meal prep for if you want um, meals during the week for your kids or for you, um, bachelorette parties, all that kind of stuff. And today we are breaking down a whole turkey. So if you guys are in the local Charleston area, we are in coastal South Carolina, you can follow their Instagram or what else do you have? Facebook and Instagram. And uh, we have a website, curatedtime.com. Check us out. And I'll leave all that information down in the description box. We're gonna have Allison just teach us all together how to break down the turkey. And so I'm gonna be limited in this video because this is not my expertise, but I hope you guys enjoy this video and I'll be back at the end. So here we have a 20 pound turkey. We got this from um, Chucktown Acres up in McClellansville. Um, I probably butchered the pronunciation. Um, but they do a lot of regenerative farming based off of um, Joel Salatin practices and um, their turkey and all of their meat is delicious. Definitely check it out. Um, we are breaking down a whole turkey today because obviously this is ginormous and it takes a very long time and to cook whole. And um, it, if you wanted to brine it, it probably wouldn't fit in your fridge. So um, we're gonna start um, by, we patted dry the turkey and we um, drained all of the juices out. And now we're gonna take out the neck bone. And this also has a bunch of offals in it, um, some kidneys, some um, the heart. And we're going to um, use these later. You could um, actually puree them into um, a gravy if you want. It adds a lot of flavor and also a lot of nutritional benefits. So you wanna start at the top part of the turkey. Um, we have this nice fatty um, flab of skin. And these are the two breast bones the breasts, and there's a big wishbone right in the middle. So the first thing you wanna do is make an incision right here and right here to separate the wishbone from the breast meat. And that will help to um, get a cleaner cut when you cut off the breasts from the carcass. So I'm making two incisions on either side of the bone. And it's okay if it's not a full piece of bone. It'd be great for that perfect wishbone wish, but if it comes out broken, that's okay too. And you just kind of cut around. You see the bottom of this bone. And you kind of wedge your fingers in there. If you have to kind of do a little another incision cut up here. Snap it out. This is what the wishbone looks like, your classic wishbone make a wish, and oh, it came true. <laughs> um, so any of the bones that we're gonna use when we break down the turkey, we're gonna put it in the stock pot and uh, make a nice turkey broth and um, stock for later on if you wanna make a gravy or a soup. Um, so I'm gonna put um, any of the little loose pieces of meat and the wishbone into the pot. Um, after we um, take out the wishbone, we're gonna go right along this breast bone to take out these two different breasts. So they're kind of right along the side of um, the front. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna kind of scoop this whole breast with your knife and go sideways and scoop the breast out. So you make a slit incision right along the breast bone, right through this fat. And you wanna keep the fat on the breast because fat is flavor and delicious. So this is the breast bone right here. So I'm gonna go on either side and just follow it all along the breast bone.
And with your non-dominant hand, you just kind of pull the breast back and allow it to kind of fall into place. There's a little um, bone right here that you want to kind of get around. That is where the, um, the wing attaches. So once you get to this part, you want to take some of this fat um, you want to make an incision cut between the um, leg and the breast and take some of this fat with you and you want to slide your knife right along this bottom. And as you can see, this is the wing, so you want to cut right between. You kind of follow the sinew and follow the different cuts. So we're going to kind of go around. This is the wing, so we're going to go around the wing and just follow the sinew. And make a cut right there. And there you have your breast, and this is the tenderloin. As you see on a turkey, it's much, much bigger than the chicken tenderloin. It's almost the size of a chicken breast. So you just kind of take all the little sinews off of this, and you have these two different pieces. And we'll get back to this later, but that is one breast. And now um, we're going to do the same thing to the other side. You might want to adjust the bird and move it around based on your dominant hand, but we're going to take the knife and we're going to scoop it, and then we'll have two of these breasts completely off of the turkey. Um, as you can see, this is the top of the breastbone, and these two are where the turkey breasts were. So um, that is the beginning part of the carcass. And so you just kind of follow this angle and then you'll get the two breasts. Now we're gonna take the two leg and thighs off. Um, if You can do this first, but I find that um, these kind of stable the turkey. So um, I like to do the breast first and then the leg and thigh, um, just so it doesn't wobble as much on you when you're trying to do both sides. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take um, do a slit in between the, um, the breast and the thigh. Um, we did that nice long strip, so we're going to um, actually turn over the turkey. So this is the thigh and this is the leg, so we're going to kind of follow it this way. And there's one little spot called the oyster. It's the most tender part of poultry and it's kind of right above their butt and it's this little scoop so if you're able to get that little piece out it's really good really tender but if not then we can just throw it into the stock and it'll be used for flavor for that so i'm going to take my knife and just kind of slit this and then i'm going to break the joint So you see how the joint popped out and this little this part is the oyster. So it's this little nugget of meat, dark meat right here and we're going to scoop our knife right around this and then and then go all along here to take off the leg and the thigh. So right around we're making this little scoop to get the oyster and then we're gonna cut right around here, right along the tailbone. And you have your leg and your thigh piece. So I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side and then we will break down the smaller pieces. Now we're gonna disconnect the wings from the carcass. Now you can, um, Kind of cook the wings the same way you do for a chicken wing. They might be a little tougher, but they're good um, 
as a meal or a snack, or if you don't want to use them for a meal, then you can just put them in the stock pot with the rest of the carcass. So right here, there's another joint. So I'm gonna put my knife right between and kind of pop that joint again. As you can see, that's the joint bone where the knuckles come together. And you cut right down and you have the whole wing. And if you want to separate these two pieces because they're pretty much like a chicken leg and thigh size, you just kind of cut in the skin and there's another joint here. We're doing some cracking today. There's another joint right here that you're just gonna cut straight through. And then you have your two pieces. If you want, you can take this wing tip off or um, you don't have to though. You could still do the same thing. Cut through, snap it, and there's another joint right there. So this definitely goes in your stock, and then these can be for a meal. If you want, you can take the bone out, or you could just roast them up or deep fry them. So now we're gonna take the whole carcass and we're gonna put it in the stock pot. If this is too big for your pot, you can just take um, either your boning knife or a chef's knife and just kind of cut a slit right where the ribs are and more snapping. And then you cut in between the bones and then you have two pieces and it's just easier for you to fit in your stock pot. So now we're gonna make a stock from all the bones and you just add some water and let it simmer for between six to 24 hours and it um, takes all the good meat, the good collagen and it's really good for you and it's just really good for an addition to um, a meal, good for drinking and it's definitely make your stock, definitely keep your carcass. So Allison, so how much uh, water are we putting in the pot? Um, we add enough water to cover the bones and you don't want to boil the stock, you want to have it at a low simmer low and slow. If you boil it, then the stock will get really cloudy. And um, you can also skim any of the, um, the sinewy stuff or the um, funky gray foam that comes up as it's kind of cooking. If you want to skim that off, that helps to make a much cleaner, more clear stock. I think today she's a little nervous. I am a little nervous. <laughs> <laughs> but you're doing so good. I was thinking yeah. when she was like handling that turkey, I was like, that was a lot of snapping. That was a lot oh, of yeah. hand handling. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. Breaking bones over here. Yeah, it was like yeah. crack, snapping. Yeah. Yeah. It's super cool though because you, a lot of, um, Poultry butchery, you just kind of follow the fat lines. That happens a lot with um, bringing down um, pork and beef as well. You just follow the sinew lines. You Sometimes they have different like spider webs, spider webs that um, you just follow. You file, follow where the joints connect. And that's a lot of what butchery is for um, land animal butchery. Oh, yeah. So what are we gonna do with the stock that you're making? Um, we'll probably make um, either a turkey pot pie or just make some bone broth, which is pretty much just stock. Um, or you can make a gravy. Um, you could... Are you freezing it? Yeah, I'll probably, yeah. So I'll make a big batch of it and then you could freeze them in different containers and then pull it out when you want to. You could also reduce it down till it's nice and glazy and you can put them in ice cube trays and if you need just a little splash of, a, um, they call it gloss, so it's reduced down and it's, um, you can use that in finishing sauces. So there's so many different ways you could use uh, turkey stock or any kind of stock. That's like a natural flavor enhancer. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about like those yeah. bouillon cubes that you just yeah. throw in. No, no, no. Like, <laughs> this is so much better than that. <laughs> okay, so yeah. we're gonna keep on keeping on. Yeah. That. Okay, so now we have our leg and our thigh. So we're gonna flip it over and 
Um, as I was saying earlier, that you just kind of follow the different joints and the different fat lines and the sinew. So where, um, where the two bones meet, you're gonna try to find the spot that they meet. You don't wanna cut any bone. If you hit a hard spot, then you just kind of wiggle your um, knife around and then you can cut straight um, to cut the leg and the thigh. As you can see, it's where the two joints connect. And this is your, this is your uh, turkey thigh, and this is your turkey leg. Okay, so now I'm gonna trim up the turkey breast. So you wanna take any of this extra um, connective tissue or um, flabby fat that's not good for um, searing off. And you can either add this to stock or you could just get rid of it it adds extra flavor, it adds extra um, animal fat to your stock, so that's all good. Um, I'm gonna trim up any little extra bones that were um, attached to the breast. And that's pretty much how you break down a turkey. So, if you wanted to have the bone out of the leg and the thigh, um, I'm going to show you how to do that now, and what you could do is you could kind of make a roulade so you can roll up the meat and put some butcher's twine around it and you can um, either braise it or sear off um, the skin and it just makes it a lot easier to um, have like a pretty much a leg and thigh roast. You would keep the two intact and um, you could stuff it with herbs or garlic confit or any um, yummy different flavor components and that just kind of makes it um, cook more evenly as it's rolled up and just makes for this nice, um, easy to slice and easy to portion. Um, so I'm gonna take all this sinew off. So sinew is just the kind of hard, um, almost like a rubber band texture um, in between some of the different parts of the turkey. And um, it doesn't really dissolve um, even if you braise it and it's uh, you just don't want to really eat it so I was just telling Allison how awesome it was to watch her break down that turkey she made it look super super easy but you know when you've been a chef for like what 15 years yeah. <laughs> oh, so our amateurs I, I, I bet you if I tried to break I did buy a turkey the two weeks ago I was telling Allison from um, what is it called whole food it was like organic turkey and since it was after Thanksgiving they were all on clearance or what is it is it called clearance sale Sell? So, so yeah, like, they're on sale for like one ninety nine. You don't buy you don't buy meat a lot from the grocery store. I don't. Do right? Yeah, like, what's it called? No. But so I was just there buying other stuff, and then I just saw because you guys know that I tried to grow our turkeys, um, and one the one that I was going to grow this year for Thanksgiving died, and then the other our other turkey Tom we gave him to a different family so that he could have a mate. So, um, so he's doing great, and he's still alive over there, but. I didn't get to grow any of our own turkeys, so when I got to Whole Foods yeah. and saw that they had a turkey on sale or whatever it's called, um, for like one ninety nine, and it said organic, I was like, oh, I was like, I'll get a, a turkey, and yeah. so now I'm gonna use these skills, yeah, and I can rewatch my own video, yeah, <laughs> and learn how to break down a turkey. Yeah. So what do you do with like all of these different like cuts of meat now that you have broken down? Do you like freeze them? Yeah, so um, if you have a food saver or a cryovac machine or even just um, have a plastic bag that you seal really tight and you can um, freeze them in portions. I like to, if you have like an immersion circulator or a sous vide machine, if you are... Um, I don't know what any of those things are. Okay. We don't know those things. See, it's kind of like a hot water bath. So you can, um, if you food saver or cryovac the bag and take all the... Um, air out and put the bag in like a slow, low and slow um, water bath um, at a controlled temperature, it kind of cooks the meat evenly. So um, I do that a couple, uh, sometimes with the turkey breast and then you can have um, homemade um, turkey, um, deli turkey for um, sandwiches and stuff and you don't have to have all the preservatives and all the gross stuff that they have at the deli in it and um or you could just um 
Sometimes you could just throw any of these, uh, the leg or the thigh, you could throw them in the crock pot, let them stew low and slow. You And that kind of makes its own sauce anyway if you add water or if you can add some of this stock to it and just kind of fortify it. And you can make a turkey soup, you could um, make a turkey pot pie, the You're making me hungry. The possibilities are endless. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, yeah. thank you so much for yeah, showing us on Breakdown Turkey. You guys have to tell Allison thank you for helping us in the in the comments. <laughs> She's actually my neighbor, so. Yeah. So we'll, well be we have a butcher on hand all the time now. Yes, now. So <laughs> she, you'll see her again, hopefully. Yeah, uh, hopefully. Yes. Be nice, be nice so yeah. she can come back to the channel. <laughs> yeah. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.